You got me high, but I'm sober You make me lonely when I'm by myself I should be free, but I'm hoping That we could be something in the end Something more than friends So Digital Photo have released their budget RE Trinity. Now this is called the Thanos Pro 2. Now you can pick this thing up for about 1350 US. Now that is budget in comparison to the RE Trinity, which is, you know, 50 or $60,000. That's pretty expensive, but it's warranted because you got the RE on it. Uh, but is this thing actually worth it? What are the pros? What are the cons? What the hell even is it? We're gonna be doing a bit of an in-depth review and some footage from this thing and see what it's all about. But uh, let's get this thing off, put it back on to the light stand, and we'll get into the video. All right, let's get it. So just before we get into the video, Digital Photo did actually send this to me. I assume they saw my Glide Gear video on either my Instagram or uh, my YouTube channel, but they didn't ask me to say anything about this. This is all in my own opinion. Uh, they do not get to see this video before it gets released. But uh, if you haven't realized uh, or don't know, this is pretty much the Ari Trinity or the budget version, which you know, the Ari Trinity itself goes for about 50 or $60,000. But uh, when you're making a product that costs 1300 US, Surely that makes it budget. And yes, the RE Trinity does hold expensive cinema cameras and lenses and the whole kit and caboodle. It does get pretty damn expensive and uh, you do want it to be super accurate and durable for that professional film set. Now, this doesn't mean that these cheaper options aren't completely useless, especially if you are pairing it with some smaller setups and cheaper or smaller cinema cameras. Uh, but you can still get pretty much the same effect that you're actually trying to create or emulate when it comes to the RE Trinity. Now, there are some pros and cons to these things, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about them. Now, overall, the Thanos Pro 2 is a very sturdy, nice build. It surely is one of the best ones that I've actually tested out there. In terms of the price, you know, it is on the higher end of most of these budget versions, and uh, it, but it does have a bigger payload and you can see that it actually is worth the price tag that is attached to this. Now the main advantages of these budget rigs is that they have the ability to hold the weight for a longer period of time, especially if you do have, uh, I paired up with Andrew Murphy again, we had his C200 onto the uh, Zhuin Crane uh, 3S, which is a very significant setup, it's quite heavy. Uh, he's got the C70 now, which is a much lighter run and gun setup, better than the C200. Now this is a lot heavier, we did decide to put it on this. I didn't want to put the A7S III because, you know, it's already a light camera. I wanted a relatively heavy setup to test to see how this thing would go. And it does make it a lot more bearable when you actually got it because, you know, once this is mounted onto you correctly, it's gonna take a lot more of the weight than your arms would. <laughs> How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So I recently tested out the Thanos Pro 2 with Jason just to see how good it really was. Now the main reason that I personally would use something like the Thanos Pro 2 is to counteract like fatigue from shooting with extremely heavy setup. So I guess like similar to an easy rig setup, the Thanos Pro 2 actually took the Crane 3S setup with the C200 that we put on it and it actually distribute the weight over like the chest and the back region rather than kind of like your arms and your neck. And like seriously, if you've ever tried to shoot with a heavy setup on a gimbal, literally after like five seconds, you're like, <gasps> What I actually found with the Thanos Pro 2 is that even though you actually have more weight because you've got the vest and the arm and the extra like uh, bottom bit that balances it out, the weight's distributed way more evenly. So instead of like feeling it in your arms and your neck like I was saying before, you feel it more in like your legs and then after quite some time you obviously start feeling it in your back and whatnot. But I was just impressed like how well we're able to support like such a heavy weight and not feel it that much. Plus the fact that you get like dummy batteries in there, you get like a monitor bracket and you get a V-Lock plate kit, like that by itself is worth a few hundred dollars. So having that in there is freaking dope. 
But anyway, guys, if you want to nerd out more about some camera gear and level up your filmmaking skills, then be sure to check out my channel that will link down in the description below. Now I'm actually going to be testing this in a couple of different situations that you normally would find it very difficult with a handheld camera and a gimbal. And we're going to put this thing to the test and really show its benefits and potentially its cons as well. We were undiscovered, didn't care for one another, you and I, you and I, thought I was okay. Till something in me changed, don't know why, don't know why You got me high, but I'm sober You make me lonely when I'm by myself I should be free, but I'm hoping That we could be something in the end Something more than friends Obviously, the focus is a little bit off, so don't worry about the focus. Uh, it is really obviously hard to utilize focus when your uh, camera is obviously too far away from you. So you will probably need a first AC uh, and a wireless focus motor. So if you do have the Tilton Nucleus Nano, you can actually utilize that uh, and put the focus motor maybe at the top. It really depends, but if you do trust your autofocus system, like the A7S III, it does relatively well in the whole situations. It was only the part where she put the protein back in the top is when it actually lost focus and actually just grabbed focus onto her head instead. Now also, one of the biggest things is you can see it is a very long setup. Now the reason why I had to create a longer setup is to create more load on the top end. So I had to make my camera a bit heavier and to make it heavier, I just made a longer shaft from the bottom of the gimbal which would increase that load angle and make the top uh, much more heavier. Then I had to make the bottom heavier, which would create a sort of, a, I suppose, a heavier rig. And you get a lot more control when it's a heavier rig. So one of the advantages of that is you can see here when she grabs the remote, the sweeping shot is relatively smooth. I did four takes of each and each take was pretty much the same when it came to this control, uh, whereas the downfall of just the gimbal, it just wasn't smooth when she grabbed the remote and I did that sort of pivot. That could just come down to user error as well, but because it also is a really light setup and you're pivoting just through the gimbal itself and not through a mechanical gimbal. Uh, so that's probably one of the biggest differences there. Otherwise, I did have more space to utilize and it was actually a lot easier to use the gimbal itself because I had more space. But as you can see here, I could stay a little bit further away from Amber and it makes it look a little bit more natural. Uh, movements were just obviously tons easier because it is a lighter setup, uh, but it just comes down to usability and getting used to the Thanos Pro 2. So one of the biggest benefits you will get with the Thanos Pro 2 over just using your gimbal is taking that weight. Now, like I said, the A7 III isn't very heavy with this setup, but if you are mounting the FX6 or the C200, C100, whatever, just a thicker cinema camera, you're gonna be taking a lot of the weight off your arms. So a guy on my Instagram did comment, uh, what are my thoughts on this sort of rig? Um, and he has the Zcam and the Zhuin uh, Crane 3S, which is a very similar setup to what we had uh, set up the other day. In terms of the weights, you will be starting to feel it on your arms. So, you know, you better be having really strong arms and a nice strong back, or you're just gonna have to be putting it down after almost every couple of shots. Whereas this one, you can, you can hold it for tons, tons longer. And it's just a lot more comfortable. It is a much more free 
There are some pros, there are some cons. It does take a while to get used to this setup. Uh, it is not just a quickly, you know, pick it up and you are good to go. It does take a while to get used to the, the movement of it. This comes down to personal use and it also comes down to the dampening as well. So you've got the two adjustable dampeners right here, the forward and back one. You just need to really just dial it in yourself. It's, uh, it's hard to sort of know the, the setup because it all depends on what you actually have on the gimbal itself. Um, but once you get it all dialed in and perfect, it becomes so much more smooth to use and just so, so easy. An advantage of the Thanos Pro 2 is the ability to attach an included V-Lock battery mount. As, can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see that. See here, this is the V-Lock battery mount. I've actually got a Sony MPF adapter here that attaches into the V-Lock, and then you can power out as well. So you do have a power switch right here, power on, power off. So all you need to do, unclick that, and that's how you release that straight on there. Imagine that is your V-Lock battery. I've just got the Sony MPF batteries because I'm cheap and V-Lock batteries are expensive, but you do have a whole bunch of options on this side of power outputs. You've got eight volt, 12 volt, 14.8 volt, and 15 volt power outputs here. You get the D-Tap um, mount here and a USB as well. So, you know, that is pretty handy if you do wanna actually charge your gimbal, charge your camera, charge uh, your monitor, it purely depends on what you actually wanna be charging there. Now, another item that isn't really included or usually included in some of these is actually the monitor mount. I mean, Small Rig do make one that you can attach to this, but uh, they include it here, which is really cool. You can mount the, um, the monitor wherever you want. If you wanna mount it at the bottom here where the V-Lock is or mount it at the top, it's up to you. Uh, it all depends on how you're actually going to be using this because you can have it like a steady cam where you're holding it upright or you can use it in javelin mode, which is, you know, this nice long straight mode. I actually prefer the javelin mode. There's less load on my body and it feels much more natural. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit that like button, that would be absolutely amazing. Comment below if you do have any questions on this or if you know you have any, if you've tested this, you've got it, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Other than that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. All right, let's get it. Me high, but I'm so burned. You make me lonely when I'm by myself. I should be free, but I'm hoping that we could be something in the end, something more than friends.